Hey guys, Big Z here from Side by Side Guys, and we're here in Hurricane, Utah at Sand Hollow State Park, and I'm joined with uh, Jason Lucklum from Craftworks. He's the brand manager for Craftworks Off-Road. Uh, today, you got some cars here. Give us a little rundown of what we're gonna be looking at. Yeah, definitely. So we have a fleet here of cars that were obviously all naturally aspirated, and now they're boosted with all our kits are bolt-on. So all these cars were naturally aspirated from the factory. Correct. And we were bringing in forced induction to all of them as an option for a huge performance increase. Correct. So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna take a look at each car, kind of give a general rundown of all the components, what goes into them, and uh, provide some information for you guys to know who Craftworks is and what they can do for you on making your naturally aspirated car a little bit faster. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, so we'll start off with what got us into the off-road game. This is a Razor XP 1000. Uh, our kit is good for 2014 all the way up to the new 2023. We've had this kit out for about four years now, so we got a ton of time into it and a lot of customers out there enjoying them. And that's what got us into expanding on everything else down the road. In our supercharger kits, we're using a centrifugal Rotrex supercharger. Everything spun right off the crankshaft right here, so it's easily adaptable just by moving the stator cover and bolting it on our billet cover for that. Our base kit's coming in at seven PSI, should be landing you right around 130-ish wheel horsepower. Uh, with no motor upgrades. So it's a truly bolt-on kit. Along with the supercharger, we include all the intercooler piping, intercooler to make sure that the intake temps and everything stay in a nice safe range. And it's easily upgradable once you start up in the boost and everything will maintain with you whatever you need. Along with the supercharger kits and everything, we have been developing our own performance exhaust system. So on this one is our race series. So that is gonna be a stainless header with a titanium muffler. Free flow, it's made for, it's the only gonna, it's gonna be the only exhaust on the market specifically designed for a supercharged engine. Everything else isn't made to push it, it's gonna be more restrictive than what we're running. So we're running bigger diameter uh, header tubing and free flow to make sure that you're just exhausting everything out as possible. You're not getting any unnecessary back pressure. And what, what has the customer feedback been on a naturally aspirated car going to a forced induction car? It's a nine day difference, especially for the customers that are trying to keep up with their buddies that have a Razor Turbo, Turbo S. Bolting on this kit gets you right to where pretty much the same horsepower levels that they are from the factory. And it's and it's pretty much instant. It's not, there's no lag or anything like that. Correct, especially with the CVT, since you whack the throttle and it goes straight to 8,000 RPM, you're making your max boost instantly. You're not waiting for a turbo to spool up since it's made mechanically. All right, next up on the list, we have the Honda, our Honda Talon Turbo Kit. We put in many, many hours in this thing, tested many different designs of turbos and everything. And currently we are landing on this nice Garrett GT25. It's kind of a little custom turbo that we have for it that spools up really quickly and has a lot of headroom for guys that want to turn it up in the future. You can see here we got our Garrett Turbo. And along with that, we made the most robust heavy duty header turbo manifold that you're, you're going to find out on the market for this Honda Talon. No issues with this. It's made to hold up to everything that we've been able to throw at it. We got guys back east that are bouncing them off of rocks, cliffs, no issues. So this turbo right here, like I said, uh, has plenty of headroom for the guys that are looking to upgrade and we are working on that for you. So that way you can have a plug and play upgraded fuel system and everything to get this up to the next level where you want it to be. Along with that, we are making a performance exhaust for this one as well. It's gonna be the only one out on the market specifically designed for a turbo Talon. So with the additional power, does that change anything with gearing? Do you need to make any compensations there? Uh, in the tuning and everything, that's all done through the DCT. So they'll be adjusting shift points and everything for you for the added power and making sure that it shifts nice and smooth. So if we're gonna be coming out with a Gen 2 kit, listening to our customers, they wanted to get a little more bed space in here. Our old original Gen 1 kit had a junction plate right here for the intercooler piping, so it did take up a little bit of bed space. So we made a new cleaner option for the Gen 2 stuff coming out. And our Gen 1 customers, we will be selling an update as well. So if you are looking to clean that up, we'll have something ready for you. Next up, we got the Yamaha YXZ. We have two different kits for this one. Uh, one's for 16 to 18 and one's for the 19 plus. The, really the only difference is gonna be intercooler setups and as well as boost levels, just because of the 16 to 18, they have a little bit weaker rods, so we had to turn, turn down the boost and everything. But if you're looking and you upgrade rods and everything in that one, it's an easy pulley swap to up the boost and get you right up to what the 19 plus can handle. So this one, here's our 19 plus kit. Uh, so this is gonna have the nice cover and everything where our intercooler is going to go in the factory location so that way you don't have anything up top so it gives it a nice factory look. Our supercharger is bolted on just like everything else directly to where the stator cover and everything is so it's just replaced and dropped back in. 
We are gonna have pulley upgrades for this as well, as well as upgraded injectors and everything for the guys that wanna turn up the boost from there. And what kind of power are we looking at? Uh, for the 16 to 18 at five pounds of boost, which is safe on the rods, uh, you're looking right around 120. With the added two, three pounds of boost for this one, you're looking at about 140. And we've been having a ton of our customers that have been getting sneak peeks of our new exhaust for the YXC. So here's a little closer look. Our race exhausts are coming out very soon. Appreciate you guys being patient. And this one, there's nothing else like it on the market. So you want to take a look at this. Another kit that's new for us this year is our Kawasaki KRX. We've had a ton of customers that hopped on this thing because this is one of the machines that really needs some extra power due to it being overbuilt and extremely heavy. And especially with the four seater that just came out, it just added to that. So a lot of our customers have been jumping on it as soon as it hit the shelves. So it was almost like Kawasaki was planning on putting a supercharger on here because just the same way that they adapted their alternator kit, that's how our supercharger goes on. Just swapping out that stator cover. We have an adapter that bolts directly to the crank, spins the supercharger, makes that extra horsepower you're looking for. Our base setup, you're looking right around eight pounds of boost, 130 wheel horsepower. It's a nine day difference from this thing. Stock the, from the factor, these do about 11 and a half, 12 seconds, zero to 60. Bolting on our kit will get you in the six seconds, almost cutting that in half. What kind of throttle response is it? Is it still linear? Like, because I mean, on the Polaris, it's very linear. It's very, it's almost like a 45 degree angle. Correct. On the KRX, it kind of has like a rubber band effect to it where you get on it at the low end and it's a little sluggish, but then once you get into it, it kind of slingshots. Has that changed at all? Uh, we did mess with the uh, throttle demand and everything in the tuning to clean that up and make it more streamlined. And especially for what the KRX is, it's a rock crawler first and foremost. So we want it to come on still nice and smooth but we still want you when you whack the throttle for it to go. Uh, the rev limiter is raised up a bit, so you will get a couple more miles per hour, but this is limited by gearing. There is no speed limiter in it really. So the only way to get more mile per hour out of it is changing gearing or doing bigger tires, which we do have options for that to make, get to that extra mile per hour that you're gonna be looking for. Another big issue for these Kawasaki's is noise. They're very high geared machines, so they like to sit in the high RPMs just cruising around. So we developed a dual exhaust, same setup as our race exhaust, gonna be titanium mufflers, stainless steel headers and everything. It'll still get you the great performance you want, but keep the decimals down so that way you don't piss off your neighbors. And the Kawasaki always had that high pitched whine to it. Does that change with this one? Uh, yes, this is gonna be a more throaty, deeper exhaust, cleaner, it sounds amazing. So keep an eye out for that. So now you guys are gonna get a sneak peek at the world's only supercharged Polaris Pro R. This is gonna be a prototype right now. We are obviously gonna be coming out to the market with it, but we've been in development for the last few months trying to get the ECU cracked and everything. Right now, as far as I know, we're one of the few that are still using the factory ECU and running anything boosted wise. Out here, we're gonna be displaying our low boost option. And that right there is full stock internals. You don't have to mess with it at all. Open it up, because there's not a lot out there to, to start turning these things up. So this right here made a huge difference for you guys that are really interested. So to adapt the supercharger, pretty much all we had to do is relocate the alternator. We ran everything off the same pulley right off the crankshaft. We relocated the alternator to the driver's side. Our supercharger sits over here on the passenger side. To update that as well and make it even better, we added an auto tensioner for the belt instead of the stretch fit one that comes with the Polaris from the factory. And what kind of power are, are you gonna expect? Because obviously being the bigger car, 225 horsepower from the factory, um, a much bigger animal than Polaris has ever had. Um, what kind of changes is this? Does, how does this impact the car um, for the consumer when they go to drive this thing out in the desert? Yeah, drivability and everything still stays very similar, just the added power. The centrifugal supercharger is very linear with its power delivery, so you don't feel an abrupt hit or anything. It's just very smooth and just pulls the whole way through the RPM range. And uh, what kind of numbers were we talking on this one? We don't have anything officially. Uh, from the factory wheel horsepower, you're looking about 170-ish. Uh, so we're planning on being closer 250 plus easily for our bolt-on kit. Four, four cylinder, two liter motors are our bread and butter. So we're, we know how to make the power with these things. All right, so we brought some other prototype stuff out here to give you guys a sneak peek on. Uh, so just to start off, we got our billet CVT here that we are designing. It's modular and allows you to swap out the sheaves and everything for different models. Backloaded arms so that way you don't have to take it apart to add weights or anything. And you could also swap out the mainspring inside without taking it apart just by taking off this cover and swapping out from there. 
Uh, next up on the list, we have our high flow fuel pump system. This one right here is designed for our Honda Talon that we're, we're coming out with. Inside, you could swap out to any different size fuel pump you want. Uh, you could run a returnless or a return line on it. And also we have a scavenging system in here to make sure that you never run out of fuel once you start getting low or at any extreme angle. So make sure it's always feeding the pump. And that'll be compatible with all the models? All the models will make a drop in play, plug and play and everything for you guys, but it'll be a very similar setup to, for all the rest of the vehicles. Finally, we got these right here for you guys that are running cabin closures or a back window, you wanna keep it all sealed up. We, we're coming out with a bolt-on fan kit for you guys. So that way it comes with all the hardware you need just to adapt it. Plus for our new intercoolers that we're gonna be coming out with the Gen 2, there will already be bungs welded on to it. So you don't even need these. You can just buy this and it'll be a direct bolt-on without having to put any extra clamps or anything on it. But this will take care of the Gen 1 customers. And that ties into the stock computer for cooling, temp sensing, and all that? Uh, correct, yeah. So we could have them kick on whenever. You could have them ran to a switch. Uh, so just depending on what the ECU and everything's compatible for, some of them already have pinouts for uh, intercooler fans and stuff like that. So you can't have that kicked on in the ECU. So you guys have some uh, new suspension stuff coming out too? We do. Uh, we're going to be coming out with full bolt-on spring kits for all the models that you saw here today. Uh, they're really nice, high-quality uh, steel and everything that we use for these springs. Uh, we also, by using very high quality, we're able to make the springs very, like, very much lighter than what the factory stuff is. Most of them weigh about three pounds lighter per spring. So it's a big difference just from swapping that out and getting rid of some weight on your vehicle. And then are you gonna have like different weight kits for cars that are built up a little heavier than other cars? We will, uh, but the base kit and everything that we'll be coming out with first is just gonna be like a nice performance kit that should work well across all platforms and, e and weight differences that you've got on your vehicles. And you'll have sizes from XP1000, Walker Evan, all the way up to like the Kawasaki oversized spring? Correct. All right, so we've been looking at a lot of cars. You brought up pretty much everything naturally aspirated in our industry. Uh, we have the 1000 all the way up to the Pro R with a two liter. Um, a lot of cool stuff happening, a lot of cool progression in our industry with, with performance and technology. Uh, you guys have really been pushing hard into like the ECUs and things like that where people have been traditionally struggling a little bit. Um, kind of give us a little bit of a rundown on, on where you guys come from and why that makes an impact for you guys tuning these cars. So our main company, we've been around for about 27 years, obviously with a focus in the tuner industry for like Hondas and everything like that. We've been in drag racing, muscle cars, we've been touching pretty much everything in each segment between suspension, throttle bodies, injectors, and obviously force induction kits. All right, so you said uh, a lot of these kits we can go online right now and order. Uh, where can we find these parts, pricing, availability, and all that? You can go directly to our website, which is craftworksusa.com. And of course, we do have a ton of vendors that are out there on online that you can shop around on. So feel free, just look. Uh, you just Google our name, it should pop right up. And what kind of time frame are we looking on getting the Pro R? That's the hot new car everybody's building up now. What kind of timeline are we looking on those parts? It is a, it is the hot new thing and everybody's got to have it now. Uh, right now it is in the prototype stage, but we are pushing to get it done as quick as possible. Uh, we're hoping probably looking around Q2 of next year, we'll be able to release it and have everything good to go. So we're going to be pushing that. And that's for the, the base tune. And then you guys are going to start pushing harder into the higher horsepower. Correct. We got to figure out and figure out the base setup first and make sure that's completely dialed in because we want these things to be as bolt-on as possible. We don't want you having to mess with it every time you go out. Right, so if you want reliability in that horsepower, you got to start with the base tune and then work your way up to the big horsepower. So that's what they're doing. They're investing the time. They're doing it right. They're not going to just throw something out for the market. So uh, how about we go out and maybe take a ride in these things? Let's do it. Let's do it.